In this video, we're going to take a look at Vesper shapes or molecular geometries related to the five or six electron domain geometries. So let's start with the five electron domain geometries. There are four possible shapes here, and they are all based on what is called the trigonal bipyramidal pyramidal shape. Okay. So as I kind of draw this structure, I'll talk about why it's this particular name. But let's start with the one that has five bonding pairs and zero lone pairs of electrons. That is also called the trigonal bipyramidal vesper shape. or that's also the molecular geometry. Now, if we were gonna do a drawing for this, this is kind of a neat shape because it has, it's, it's almost a combination of the trigonal pyramidal shape from a four electron domain tetrahedral kind of shape, except that we have one triangle on the top, one triangular pyramid on the top, and one triangular pyramid on the bottom. So the trigonal comes from triangle, the bi means two, and pyramid means, well, pyramidal means pyramid. So it's going to have one going up and one going down. And then in the center, we have a uh, trigonal planar kind of shape. So uh, actually, let's draw this one as a wedge. And then we'll draw one going back like this. Now, in terms of bond angles, there's a few here. So between the ones going up and the one to the side here, or the ones in the, um, in the planar around the center, it's 90 degrees. But within the actual uh, triangle planar shape, it's 120 degrees. All right, so that's our first shape. Um, our second one based on this electron domain geometry is four bonding pairs, one non-bonding pair. This is actually my favorite shape. It's called Seesaw. And if we were to draw it, let's go central atom, one going up, one going down. We'll have a lone pair of electrons here. And then we'll draw the other two, one going out, one coming in. And the reason it's called Seesaw is because if you were to tip this up onto its side, it actually creates like a little seesaw. So if you wanna see that, uh, you can get one of those molecular model kits and you could build this structure and see what the seesaw looks like or you can come and ask me and I will happily show you. Now, in terms of bond angles, this bond's probably a bit less than 120 degrees, but I'm just gonna write 120 degrees because we don't need to get super, super specific here. All right, and then uh, between the ones going up and down, um, and the plane is going to be a 90 degree again. Okay, next shape has three bonding pairs, two non-bonding pairs, and this one's called T-shaped. And so if we were to draw this one, now we're going to draw one going up, one going down. Um, and this, at this point, we're just going to draw the other one going off to the side, and then we'll draw two electron pairs on this side, showing that there's still some sort of angle. And I'm just going to put 90 degrees here. Again, it's probably a little bit less because those lone pairs of electrons are going to be pushing it a little bit closer together. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to leave it at 90. The last one has two bonding pairs, three non-bonding pairs. This one's called linear. And it looks a lot like our linear shape that's based off of a two electron domain geometry, except now we got one going up, one going down, but we have three lone pairs of electrons around that central atom. And we do again, draw them at angles, uh, bond angles here, 180 degrees, cause it's linear. Okay. So those are all of our shapes based on a trigonal uh, pyram bipyramidal electron domain geometry. And uh, these are all of our different Vesper shapes that are based off of this particular geometry. Okay, so our last sort of set is based on six groups attached to a central atom. These are all based off of a shape called, uh, sorry, octahedral. And so we'll just put that all through there. There are three different ones that we're gonna look at. So the first we'll look at six bonding pairs, zero non-bonding pairs, 
that Vesper shape or the molecular geometry is also called octahedral. And what this looks like is that we have one going up, one going down, and then we have four sort of in a square that's in the plane in the center here. So I'm going to use wedges to show those coming out and dashes to show those going back. Um, all of the bond angles here are 90 degrees. So um, those ones are pretty easy to remember. So the reason it's octahedral is because if you connected all of these and all of the faces together, it would form an octahedral kind of shape. It's going to have eight sides when it's all kind of filled in. So that's where the name is coming from. All right, so uh, there are two other shapes based on this electron domain geometry. We got five bonding pairs, one non-bonding pair. This one's called square pyramidal. And um, essentially it looks like the top one, except we pull one of the bottom ones off. So I'm just going to put the lone pair of electrons there instead. We have the one going up, and then we still have the square shape in the middle here. And in terms of bond angles, we're just going to, again, say they're 90 degrees. They're probably, like I said, slightly less than that, but uh, we're just going to keep it simple here and leave it at that. The last one, 4 and 0, is square planar. Um, and that's taking off the one that's on the top on our octahedral shape. So we're going to have lone pair on the top, lone pair on the bottom. We're going to have a wedge and a dash here, and then another wedge and a dash here. Um, again, we're just going to keep the bond angle simple and say that they're 90 degrees. So this one's called square planar because it's in a square and it's all within a plane. The, the thing is, even though it's planar, we still draw the dimensional, the, the wedges coming out and the dashes going in because it's based off of the octahedral shape. All right, so those are your shapes and for five and six electron domain geometries. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.